Welcome back to the Limit Series. All right, so here's number six of the videos, and um, I'm going to use Stacey McMullen's note card to kind of talk you through the uh, limits and definition of continuity. So, um, whoo, crazy little pen gets a little nutty sometimes. So I'm going to go pick up Stacey's card. Um, let me go to my Dropbox, and this is uh, card number six. I don't know if these have been changed or not. I can't keep up. She keeps sending me notes, but this is the latest one I have. So um, she goes through and defines the continuity at C, and so that it's got to be defined. The limit has to exist, and the y value of the limit and the y value of the function have to be the same. So let's go through and work a few of these problems together and talk about them a little bit. All right. So it says use H to see if it's continuous or not. So here's the deal. What we're going to be concerned with in this particular problem, make it good going. All right. What you're really concerned with, okay, this is a line and this is a cubic. And we know that cubics and lines are very continuous. They're nice and flowy and smooth and continuous. We like them. So this graph is breaking at negative 2. So our job is to figure out if where the line and the cubic break up, do they meet? And if they meet, do they meet at 3? Because all three pieces have to come together for it to be continuous. So everything less than negative 2 is going to be a line, and it will be nice and continuous. Everything to the right of negative 2 is a nice, smooth cubic. Not anything with breaks or anything, so it's continuous. So the only place we're worried about is this is what I call the break point. So if you hear me say that, that's called the break point for Kitty. It's the point where the graph breaks up. So the first thing you got to do is see if plug negative 2 into there. If you plug negative 2 into the line, you get, um, let's see, 4 plus 3 is 7. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. If you plug negative 2 into here, you get 8, negative 8, plus 12 plus 3, which is 7. Okay. So here's what we know by definition. We know that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of h of x is 7. Because from the left, this is from the left, and from the right, they are approaching the same value. We know that h of negative 2 is equal to, in this case, this is your y value, is equal to 3. Are those two equal? No. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 of the function does not equal the function's value at negative 2. Therefore, h of x is not continuous, not continuous at x equals negative 2. So if this would have said 7 right here, if this would have been a 7 instead of a 3, it would be continuous. So what you have is you have this line coming in, and uh, I don't know exactly what it looks like. So you have this line coming in, and there's a hole. And then this cubic is picking up this hole somehow, probably, oh, um, here would be 3. Somehow, and kind of going off. And then there's this random point, and this is at 7. This is happening at 7. And then there's this random point at negative 2. Like this is negative 2. And that's 7. And there's this random point down here. So the line and the cubic are meeting up, but the point that they assigned at that value is not there. So that is not continuous. Number 3 is a straight up, you got to know this or not. You have to know that, yes, this is a cute little graph that does this weird thing, 
but it doesn't mean it's not differentiable. I mean, excuse me, it doesn't mean it's not continuous. Here's your bird graph, and if you went through and did those basic functions, they should know what that looks like. Here's the x. Again, if you did the basic function uh, limits, they got to uh, expose to that. And then you have this tangent guy who's just nuts. Woo, right? He's doing the tan dance. There he is. And so there are all kind of discontinuities there. So let me read the question again. Which of the followings are continuous for all real numbers? And that's going to be 1 and 2. So 1 and 2. Right? This is a great type of AP question because it's the multiple answer question. Now the next one we're going to do is just beautiful. I love that she puts different um, kinds of questions on one card. So it says, for what values of the function is g continuous? I also like the fact that she uses g instead of f. I, I normally use f of x, and so she uses h and g, which is really good. It's good that kids are getting used to seeing things other than just f. So it says, where are they going to be continuous? This is a line. This is a quadratic or a parabola. Y'all, these things are going to be continuous everywhere, except maybe where it breaks up. So the break point of x equals 3 is the only thing we're worried about. And again, I want to show you that whole visual thing that you might need to do for kids, where you put cx plus 1 on the left, and you put cx squared minus 1 on the right. Because um, they can see from the left to the right, that, that might help them. So if they are continuous, then when you plug 3 into that piece and you plug 3 into the x of that piece, they should be equal. So let's just do that. So c times 3 plus 1 has to equal c times 3 squared minus 1. They, if, you, if the two pieces meet up, then they must come together. So you get 3c plus 1 equals 9c minus 1. And if you solve that, I think that's minus negative 6c equals negative 2. So c equals 1 third. So if c is equal to 1 third, then that will make this a continuous function because both y values, this is a y from the left, and this is the y on the right, will be equal at that particular x substituted in. Okay, so that is the definition of continuity. That, and see what you did here is you made the limit be equal and you made the y value be equal at the same time because of this equal thing, you know that that's going to make that equal. All right, hope that helps a little bit. And uh, I think I'm going to do one more video on some things that you might want to kind of stretch kids with and a suggestion for your guests.